Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, hello everyone. My name is Rizna and my student number is 2005 I'm from C class of 2020. And today I'd like to present a material social linguistic. It is about linguistic varieties and multilingual nation in EFL context. All right, the first material, it is about vernacular slanger languages. So, the term vernacular is used in a number of ways. It generally refers to a language which has not been standardized and which doesn't have official status. There are hundreds of vernacular languages such as Buang in Papua New Guinea, Hindustani in India, and Bumba in Vanuatu, many of which have never been written, known, or described. In a multilingual speech community, the many different ethnic or tribal languages used by different groups are referred to as vernacular languages. Verniculars are usually the first languages learned by people in multilingual communities, and they are often used for often used for a relatively narrow range of informal function. There are three components of the meaning of the term vernacular. The most basic refers to the fact that a vernacular is an unquantified or under an standardized variety. The second refers to the way it is acquired in the home as a first variety. And the third is the fact that it is used for relatively circumscribed functions. And the second material is about standard languages. So a standard variety is generally one which is written and which has undergone some degree of regularization or codification, for example, like in a grammar and also dictionary. It is recognized as a prestigious variety or quote by a community, and it is used for each function alongside a diversity of L varieties. Standard varieties are codified, uh, are codified Parities. Codification is uh, usually achieved through grammars and also dictionaries which are record and sometimes prescribe. And the standard forms of the language. Dictionary, dictionary writers or lexicographers have to decide which word to include in the dictionary as part of the standard parity, which form to mark as a dialect and also which to omit altogether. They generally take the usage of educated and socially prestigious members of the community as their creation. And standard languages are developed in a similar way in many other European countries during the 15th, 16th, and also 17th centuries. Next, we move to the material is about world in world analysis. So these terms, world analysis and new analysis, have been used to emphasize the range of different varieties of English that have developed since the 19th century. Uh, in context where multilingualism is the norm, a real, relatively standard varieties such as like formal Singapore English, uh, which is expressing global concepts shared across nations and also uh, influenced by local language. Singles, a very informal, colloquial a variety of Singapore English, is a well-described example. And this native varieties may express the local aspirations and identities identities of a wide range of communities. And this is reflected in linguistic characteristics such as like stir patterns and then uh, vocabulary from local language, grammatical features which indicate the influence of local language, and also semantic concepts drawn from the other languages spoken in the communities where they are used. And then we will move to the material which is lingua franca and also Bitgens and Crows. So a language franca is a language used for communication between people who first language diverse between the Colombian Indians Tucano is the main lingua franca, and it can be used with Indians who live in the Falfes area of the Northwest Amazon uh, on both sides of the border between Colombia and Brazil. Uh, in some countries, uh, the most usable and widely used lingua franca is an official language or the national language. In multilingual communities, lingua franca are so usable, they may eventually displace the vernaculars. Lingua franca often developed initially as trade languages, illustrating again the influence of economic factors on language. And then it is about pitkins and crows. 
So a bitkin is a language which has to with which has no native speakers. And bitkin develop as means of communication between people who do not have a common language. Bitkin seems particularly likely to arise when two groups with different language are communicating in a situation where there is also a third dominant language. The bitkin in is an addition is an addition to the linguistic uh, repertory repertoire used for a specific purpose such as trade or perhaps administration. Consequently, the structure of Bitcoin is generally a no more complicated uh, than it needs to be expressed uh, these functions. Uh, nobody uses a Bitcoin as a means of as a means of groups identification or to express social distance, and so there is no pressure uh, to maintain a repentantly redundant features of language. So that's uh, the explanation about lingua franca and also Bitcoin and Creoles. All right, maybe that's all for my presentation. Thank you for the attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.